Hi, my name is Sister Vicki Greiner. I'm a Poor Clare nun here at the Monastery of St. Clair here in Cincinnati. Currently, we're a community of 10 sisters here in Cincinnati, but there are approximately 16,000 Poor Clares around the world. I'm the vocation director here at the monastery, and I'd like to thank you for inviting me to share with you a little bit about my life as a Poor Clare. We're Franciscans, so we follow St. Francis and St. Clair of Assisi. Being a Franciscan is like being part of a big family because we have a very large family tree. Uh, it's estimated that there are more than a million Franciscans throughout the world. You may know several of the friars there at your school or in your parish. Uh, the friars are what we call the first order of Franciscans. The poor clares are called the second order of Franciscans. We're the contemplative branch of the family tree. You may also know some third order Franciscans like the Oldenburg Franciscan Sisters or the Franciscan Sisters of the Poor uh, or the TORs in Steubenville, Ohio. Uh, in addition to these three different religious orders, these three different branches of the family tree, there's another branch of the family tree, the secular order Franciscans. Secular Franciscans are lay men and women who follow St. Francis and St. Clair of Assisi. People like Deacon John Gerke and his wife Colleen are members of the Secular Franciscan Order here in Cincinnati. So what do Poor Clares do all day? Well, we're a contemplative order, so as Poor Clares, our ministry is prayer. We pray for the needs of the church, the needs of the world, for individuals who need prayers, and for those who have no one to pray for them. So prayer is our full-time job. In addition to this full-time job, and because we have no employees to help us out here at the monastery, our part-time job is to help run the monastery and do all those household chores similar to what you and your family do at home. I've been here at the monastery since 2008, and I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, before I entered religious life, I attended high school and college. I got my undergraduate degree in finance and then went on to get my MBA and my JD at Indiana University School of Business and Indiana University School of Law in Indianapolis. I worked as an attorney for several years in Indianapolis before I entered religious life. So I'm what you might call a late vocation because I didn't enter religious life right away, not right out of high school, not right out of college. I had a career and I lived independently for many years before I felt God calling me to religious life. Today, I'd like to ask you to think about where you may feel God calling you. Uh, because with our baptism, we're all called to holiness. We're all called to live a gospel life and we're all called to follow Jesus. Uh, some people are called to married life, some people are called to single life, and some people are called to religious life. And figuring out where you feel God is calling you is known as discernment, and that's an ongoing process throughout your life. With our baptism, we're all called to holiness, we're all called to live a gospel life, and we're all called to follow Jesus. Religious life is a life within the Roman Catholic Church where we dedicate our lives and all we do to God and to the Church. As religious, we make vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Some orders of religious life make additional vows. As a poor Clare, I make a fourth vow, the vow of enclosure, which means I have no work or ministry outside the monastery. In religious life, we can live our lives as nuns, religious sisters, or religious brothers, or priests, because we receive a call from God to serve the church in this way. I felt God calling me to dedicate my life to a life of contemplation and prayer. My life of contemplation and prayer as a poor Claire nun is my vocation. A vocation is different than a job. I've had several jobs here as a poor Claire. I've been a writer, a webmaster, a photographer, a musician, a secretary, and a cook, all here at the monastery. Your teacher or a friend might ask you questions like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or what will your work, what will your vocation be? 
These questions usually mean what job skills do you have or what line of work do you want to be in? In this context, the question is more a question of what you've decided to do with your life to earn a living. Today, in talking about religious vocations, the question is not so much what do you want to be when you grow up, but who do you want to be? So here today, we're using the word vocation in a different context, in the context of your life in relationship with God and with others. Today we're asking the questions, who is God calling you to be, and how do you want to live your faith? God made each of us unique. As a Christian, as a follower of Christ, each of us are called to our own vocation, our own role as a member of the body of Christ. When I'm listening for God's call, my prayer is, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. God's will, not my will, be done. Thank you again for inviting me to be with you today through this video. God bless.